Good afternoon, this is Eric Holler with the National Weather Service with Alaska Statewide Weather. For July 15, 2020, we have a couple options for you. A menu system through the telephone, 1-800-472-0391. And we also have a web page, weather.gov slash Alaska. You can take off Alaska and put in Fairbanks, Anchorage, or Juneau to help you further refine your search. And lastly, I wanted to tell you about a email address that you can contact us if you have any questions or comments about the program or weather service in general. Looking at the hazards map, nothing on the hazards map again today, but uh, please be sure to check the hazards map before you go outside and see if there's any advisories, watches, or warnings out for your area. For the fire danger, yesterday I had nothing in the map, but today I went back in and put in some high fire danger. Things are starting to dry out there again in the uh, Fort Yukon area, Upper Yukon. But uh, you expect that to maybe pick up here in the next day or so. For the Alaska Wildland Fire Information, the lightning strikes, there was only 175 strikes yesterday and most of those are again uh, clustered in the Fort Yukon area up in the Porcupine Basin otherwise some areas around the Cuscoquan Mountains kind of northeast in McGrath and clustered down there in Wasilla and the Talkeetna Mountains. For precipitation estimates for July 15th ending about 4 a.m. this morning there was pretty good rainfall in the Panhandle about a half to an inch in some areas, even the coastal mountains picking up maybe two inches in some areas estimated up there since we don't have any high elevation gauges. But otherwise, scattered thunderstorms produced areas of approximately tenth to a quarter inch in some spotty areas in the interior and down through the Talkeetnas and Chugach mountain ranges and again out there in the Sioux Peninsula. For the satellite image, you can see a low pressure system. You'll see that on the surface map, but a low pressure system in the central Aleutian spreading fog and some light rainfall. Otherwise, we also noted some fog along the coastal areas, along the west coast and portions of the Arctic coast. But otherwise, again, scattered rainfall associated with some buildups in the interior. And another low pressure system near southeast Alaska producing rainfall there, and that spreads into Canada. And we'll set this in motion one more time, see if we can pick out anything else. But uh, I think we've talked about it. there may be a little bit of um, showers there in the Wrangles developing rapidly as of uh, noon today. Today's weather, again, there's a 1,000 millibar low near the central Aleutians, fog and rainfall associated with that system, fog also through much of the bearing and up into the west coast around a 10, 15 millibar high. And then we've got some scattered rain showers again uh, in, along the mountains, Alaska Range, Southwest and Brooks Range. And again, thermal trough, thermal low complex in the eastern interior down through British Columbia, and another low pressure system there near the Panhandle, 1,005 millibars there. And again, high pressure over the Gulf region. For tonight's weather, that 1,000 millibar low now, 999 millibar low with a short wave out ahead of that system. Rainfall and fog conditions can be expected associated with those two systems moving up into the Alaska Peninsula. And then ridge moving off into the northern Bering, uh, Bering Strait area, 1,014 millibar fog along the west coast for tonight. And then thermal lows again continuing in the interior with scattered rain uh, decreasing over the interior. And that low near the panhandle moves into Canada with scattered rainfall associated with that system. And then Thursday's weather again 
afternoon thunderstorms pick up once again. Thermal lows, rainfall, rain showers associated with those two systems. And then again, fog and marine stratus along the west coast and along the Arctic coast. And low continuing in the Aleutians with fog associated with that system and scattered rainfall. For Friday's weather again, much of the American record this time of year with thermal lows, thunderstorm activity in the interior down through the southwest along the thermal trough, thermal low complex, and then some fog out in the bearing and that can low continues out there near the Aleutians, thousand fold millibars now. And then fog and rainfall in the Gulf region, high pressure moving into Prince William's, I'm sorry, near the Panhandle, 1,018 millibars there. Low temperatures Thursday morning, 30s along the North Slope, Taktovic 34, Prudhoe Bay area 32, Yukiavik 31, 0.047, Arctic Village 47, and Activity Pack 40, for Yukon 40, or 54, 47 at Eagle, 52 in Fairbanks, 50 in Galena, I mean 50 in Tanana, 52 in Galena, and McKinley, Denali National Park, 47, 52 in McGrath, 52 in Antioch, 52 in Bethel as well, and then 52 in Dillingham, Cold, I'm sorry, King Salmon, 45, Cold Bay, 50, 50 in Dutch Harbor, but 50s through the Alaska Peninsula, down through 40s in the Aleutians. And then St. Paul 47, Savunga 43, and then Yakutat 47, Haynes 49, State Capital 49, Juneau, and then Ketchikan 54. Four high temperatures Thursday afternoon, looking at upper 30s to low 40s along the north slope there, Yukiavik 36, Kaktovik 38, Arctic Village 56, and Atuvik Pass 56. And then Ambler 67, 67 as well in both Fort Yukon and Bettles. And then 70 in Eagle, 67 in Fairbanks, Tanana 65, 63 in Galena, 67 in McGrath, 68 in Antioch, 70 there in Bethel. And then 72 in King Salmon, 70 in Dillingham, 50s through much of the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians with 49 in Shimia, St. Paul 56, Savunga 49, 63 in Kodiak, and then Yakutat 61, 65 in Haines, 65 State Capital, 63 in Ketchikan. For low temperatures Friday morning, 30s along the North Slope, again Kaktovik 34, Dead Horse 34, Yukiavik 31.045. Arctic Village 45, 38 in Antutubic Pass, 52 in Fort Yukon, 49 in Eagle, 49 as well in Bettles, Ambler 47, Fairbanks 52, 52 in Tanana, and 52 in Galena, and then 49 in Nome. Otherwise, we're going to be seeing 52 in Northway, and 54 in Talkeetna, and then 54 in McGrath. 52 in Antioch, 52 as well in Bethel, and 52 in King Salmon, 52 in Dillingham, Cold Bay 49, Dutch Harbor 50, and 50s through much of the Alaska Peninsula, and 40s through the Aleutians, with Shimmy of 45, and then 49 in Yakutat, 54 in Haines, 50 in Juneau, 54 in Ketchikan. Lastly, high temperatures on Friday, 38 in Kaktovik, 43 in Dead Horse, 38 in Yukiavik, 49 in Point Hope, and Arctic Village, 59, 54 in Anaktubic Pass, 68 in Fort Yukon, 67 there in McGrath, 68 in Ambler, 67 in Eagle, 67, or 70 in Northway, 65 in Fairbanks, and Tanana, 67. 68 in Galena, 67 in McGrath, 67 in Antioch as well, and also in Bethel, King Salmon 67, Dillingham 67, 50s through much of the Alaska Peninsula into the Lucians, 49 in Shemia, St. Paul 56, 
49 is Savunga, Kodiak 61, Cordova area 58, 58 in Yakutat, and 59 there in Haines, 59 in, or 58 in Juneau, 61 in Ketchikan, otherwise it's going to be pretty nice the next few days, with 60s and 70s through much of the Yukon River Basin and down through much of the Cusacoan Basin as well with 60s in Anchorage and in through the Matso with Anchorage 67, 63 in Kings, or I'm sorry, Kenai, 67 in Hope and 63 in Seward and also Nome 59 as well. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the flying weather for Thursday morning, we'll have some marine stratus along the coastal areas, especially along the Arctic coast. Also, a couple troughs of low pressure along the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula provide IFR conditions out that way. Also, some scattered areas, marginal conditions along the mountainous areas, Alaska Range and in the St. Elias. Also, some Areas of IFR or marginal IFR in the Panhandle, but generally pretty nice over the northern part of the Panhandle. And again, watch for afternoon thunderstorms across the region. For Thursday afternoon, uh, continued IFR conditions, especially along the Arctic coast there, and extensive IFR conditions through the Bering Sea and Aleutians and portions of the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, again, thunderstorms popping up in the afternoon time frame and then marginal conditions showing up there in southeast uh, uh, IFR conditions just off the coast there for Friday morning IFR conditions again showing up in the north slope there Arctic coast and down through portions of the west coast uh, YK Delta and the Seward Peninsula and extensive cloudiness and low cloud ceilings along the Lucians in the Bering Sea and Alaska Peninsula and into the Gulf. And again, marginal conditions along the Alaska Range and other mountainous areas of the Kenai, Chugach Mountains, and Wrangell St. Elias. And then marginal conditions in the southeast. Friday afternoon continued pretty good flying conditions except for thunderstorms across much of the mainland. Otherwise, marginal conditions showing up along the coastal areas as the Marine stratus pushes offshore, but IFR conditions through much of the Bering and through the Aleutians into the Gulf, and IFR conditions showing up in the eastern Kenai and north northern Gulf areas. For pass conditions, everything's looking pretty nice. Anaktuva Pass, VFR, Adigan VFR, Lake Clark and Merrill VFR, and this will be the same for all of the passes in the Alaska Range. Rainy VFR. Windy VFR, Isabel VFR, Mentasta VFR, Tanita VFR, Portage VFR, Chilkoot and White, and I even gave VFR conditions as well. For the freezing levels, 8,000 foot freezing level across the mainland, you have to go just off the Arctic coast to find surface the freezing level at the surface, but otherwise 10,000 foot freezing level across the Gulf area and into the Bering, uh, 12,000 foot freezing levels. They're just in the central Gulf and south of the Aleutians. Icing conditions, I went for above 10,000 feet in some of the areas in the interior and portions of the Seward Peninsula and Western Brooks Range. Jet stream for Thursday, 30,000 feet, a couple of low pressure systems, mainly a couple of troughs there. And the Lucians with uh, 40 knot winds driven from the north across the central Lucians, 50 knots from a northwesterly direction there in the western Lucians, and around the low, just uh, inside Canada near the panhandle, 45 knots again from the northerly direction across the Kenai Peninsula, 40 miles per hour, I'm sorry, miles per hour across the Kenai Peninsula, and 50 miles per hour across the Seward Peninsula. 9,000 foot winds Thursday, again, low pressure system in the Aleutians, uh, counterclockwise flow around that system, 35 miles per hour in the central bearing, and 
30 miles per hour from the west, just south of the central Aleutians. And again, over light and variable across the mainland, but otherwise 25 knots from the north as you get into the northern panhandle. For 3,000 foot winds, there's that low pressure system. Again, counterclockwise flow, 35 miles per hour across the central bearing. 30 knots as you get just south of Aleutians, light and variable across the mainland. And for turbulence on Thursday, no turbulence forecast at this point, but again, pretty good flying conditions statewide. Just watch for afternoon thunderstorms. We may have a little bit of clouds in the mountainous areas, but otherwise uh, do not expect any uh, limited flying conditions across the pass, but uh, most of the clouds and that low clouds and ceilings visibilities will be just offshore along the coastal areas and into the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined once again by the science liaison of GINA, Eric Stevens. GINA, of course, is the Geographic Information Network of Alaska based up at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And GINA is all about satellites, and Eric mm -hmm. is always here to tell some really cool stuff about satellites. Now, the last time you were here, we talked about how the weather satellites can see clouds and what's under the clouds, but you're telling me that satellites can do a lot more, even protect the, uh, the general public uh, with uh, aviation safety information. That's right. There's one particular aspect of satellites we're going to mm -hmm. talk about today that might not be immediately obvious, and that is detecting things in the atmosphere mm -hmm. that are not clouds, that are not snow, not rain, huh. but rather a hazard that can happen here in Alaska, and that is volcanic ash. Uh, of course. When okay. a volcano goes off, puts ash in the air, this is of course a hazard to the public if the ash were to fall on the ground in, in accumulating amounts. Sure. Additionally, while the ash is in the air, and this is the more frequent hazard, is it's a hazard to aviation mm -hmm. because you cannot fly an airplane into volcanic ash without, without great risk. Worst case scenario, the ash gets into a jet engine, right. wrecks the engine, kills the engine, mm -hmm. and now you have an airplane flying with no engines. Right. It won't fly for long. So aviators need to avoid that ash how do you avoid the ash? You have to know where it is mm -hmm. by identifying it with a satellite image and perhaps predicting then where the ash will flow with the overall weather patterns. Satellites are so important for identifying when a volcano goes off mm -hmm. and then tracking the ash after the, the volcano injects the ash into the atmosphere. Now, are you talking about seeing the heat signature or a huge volcanic plume with a cloud that we're used to seeing in the really pretty pictures of, of any Alaska volcano that's erupted recently, Redound, for example? Or are mm -hmm. we talking about the really fine details? Because this well, is polar orbiting satellites, the ones that are very low to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. The, the geostationary satellites can do some detection. The polar orbiters, like you say, they're mm -hmm. closer to the Earth. They mm -hmm. give the even better view. In answer to your question, mm -hmm. I would say all of the above. Oh, okay. A cool. heat signature from a volcano going off with all the, the heat that comes um, with the eruption, that mm -hmm. can be identified in infrared imagery. Okay. We've got images from the Kamchatka Peninsula. That's, that's the far eastern part of Russia mm -hmm. on the western side of the Bering Sea, loaded with volcanoes. Right. You know, Alaska has plenty of volcanoes of its own. We can also be affected when a, a volcano goes off in Kamchatka, say, mm -hmm. and then the weather carries that ash toward Alaska from the west. Right. You can see the, the infrared heat signature, like you say. Okay. Also, um, the ash in the air can be detected by doing some sophisticated uh, channel differencing within the satellite data. You can find the, uh, the identification of sulfur dioxide, say, that's a component of the volcanic okay. emission, mm -hmm. and you can trace this um, with the satellite imagery. Um, sometimes volcanoes go off that haven't gone off before, mm -hmm. and we're not expecting them to go off. Say if there's no seismometers around a given volcano that hasn't gone off in 100 years, you might not be expecting it to go off in the satellite imagery. Since satellites can be right. globally comprehensive, that might be the first sign that you have that a volcano oh, wow. in an unexpected area is going off. So it's a good backup system, okay. Right, wow. right, and, and people are working all the time on automating the, uh, the interrogation of satellite data by computers mm -hmm. to provide a, a first alert to a human to, so the software will say, we think this might be important human, go take a closer look, because right. the people are still the best way to, to interrogate the imagery, but the planet's a big place, yes. and we can't be looking everywhere all the time, so the software helps give a first, first cut. And then in Alaska, there's a special kind of surprise angle where the satellites are helpful, and that is um, the Katmai eruption mm -hmm. of 1912. 
um, huge eruption. There is still somewhat of a moonscape out there in southwest right. Alaska where all this ash is laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a, a strong weather pattern comes along where we have roaring northwest winds that go across the Alaska Peninsula there and can actually pick some of this ash up right. off the ground. No volcano is going off. This was more than 100 years ago that that volcano actually yeah. blew. So you're not going to see a heat signature like we were discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be no seismic signature of a volcano going off. So those data sets, they'll say, oh, no right. problem. Mm -hmm. But you can see in some of the satellite imagery this ash, as it's called, resuspended. Right. When the, the wind comes along, picks it up, the ash can be lofted a few thousand feet in the air just okay. with the wind. And an airplane flying into that plume is, is exposed to some danger. So we need to track right. that ash to provide guidance to aviators that you don't want to be flying here at these elevations in this area. We've got some imagery of the resuspension. And you can mm -hmm. see the wind blowing strongly from the northwest, picking up the ash and, and blowing it down to the southeast. Right. And so that's another perhaps not immediately obvious hazard of volcanic ash. It, Katmai is the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> for sure. Very good. So we've got satellites that, that can help us understand the weather uh, from the past and the immediate past. And we talked last time about how that's feeding into the forecast modeling to help improve mm -hmm. predictions. But mm -hmm. now they're also protecting the general public with aviation sensitive information and watching volcanoes, whether they're erupting or maybe have erupted in the past and finding the, the left behinds from, from those uh, volcanic events there. So really impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again today. And uh, you're a gift that keeps on giving from the satellite community. <laughs> so thanks a lot. And we hope to have you back again soon. Again, Eric Stevens with Gina at the University of Alaska. Fairbanks. And if you'd like to check out any of the information that uh, Eric has shared with us again today, you can do that very easily by going to www.gina.alaska.edu. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the sea ice analysis for today, we do have some lower concentrations along the Arctic coast there. From basically Prudhoe Bay and approaching Ukiavik, that was noted yesterday and continues today. Also some further expansion of the ice further north through Chukchi Sea and through the Bering open areas there as well. For the marine forecast for southeast, inside waters, winds generally from the south, 10 to 15. On the southern end of the inside waters, Clarence Strait area, winds from the northwest at 10, seas as high as 3 feet. And then winds out in the outside waters, winds generally from the west, 10 to 20, seas as high as 8 feet. And then for southeast on Friday, winds generally from the South in the inside waters, 5 to 15. Outside waters, winds generally from the south at 10 seas as high as 5 feet. We do have a small craft advisory out late tonight through Thursday for the southern outside waters. Thursday's marine forecast for south central Prince William Sound, winds generally from the southeast at 10 seas as high as 2 feet for the Gulf region, winds generally from the southwest, 20, seas as high as 7 feet. For the Cook Inlet, winds generally from the south or southwest, 15 to 20 knots, seas as high as 5 feet. And for Friday, Prince William Sound, winds generally from the east at 10, seas as high as 2 feet. For the Gulf region, winds from the southeast at 15, seas as high as 5 feet. For Cook Inlet, winds variable, 10 to 15. Seas as high as four feet near Kamishak Bay. And for Thursday's marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, we're looking at winds around Kodiak Island, generally from the southwest, 15 to 20, seas as high as seven feet. And for the north side of the peninsula, winds generally variable 10 knots, seas as high as two feet. And for Friday, around Kodiak Island, winds generally from the south at 10 to 15, seas as high as seven feet there, just off the coast of Kodiak Island. And south side of the peninsula, winds generally from the south at 10, seas as high as 6 feet. North side of the peninsula, winds variable 10, seas as high as 2 feet. For the Lucian chain on Thursday, winds generally from the south over the central and eastern Aleutians, 15 to 20 knots, seas as high as 10 feet. For the western Aleutians, 
Winds generally from the north, 15 to 20. Season highs, 6 feet. And for Lucian Chain on Friday, winds variable, t 10 to 15, up to 20 from the north. They're between Shimmy and Kiska. Season highs, 6 feet. And we do have a small craft advisory through Thursday night for the Central and Eastern Aleutians. For Thursday's marine forecast, west coast winds generally from the northeast, 10 to 15, otherwise variable in the southern end of that area, up to 15 knots as well around the Pribilofs. And in Norton Sound, winds generally from the northwest at five, seas as high as one foot. For Friday, winds generally from the north, 10 to 15, seas as high as four feet around the Pribilofs. And in Norton Sound, winds generally from the northwest, 10 knots, seas as high as two feet. For Arctic Coast, along the uh, Beaufort Coast there, winds generally from the northeast, 10, 10 knots, seas as high as two feet in the open areas. And then down through the uh, Chukchi Sea area, northwest coast, winds generally from the northeast at 20, seas as high as five feet. Down through the Bering Street, winds generally from the northwest at 10, seas as high as three feet. And for Friday, along the Arctic coast there, winds generally from the northeast at 10 to 15, sea size 2 feet in the open areas. And northwest coast, winds generally from the northeast, 25 knots, sea size 5 feet. And down through Bering Strait, winds generally from the north, 15 to 20, sea size 4 feet. And for tonight's weather, a couple low pressure systems, uh, short wave activity. Near the Aleutians and into Alaska Peninsula, 1,002 millibars there, or 999 there in the central Aleutians, spreading rain, light rain across the area, otherwise high pressure in the northern Bering and Bering Strait area with fog along the west coast and the Arctic coast as well, otherwise scattered showers along the peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.